All right, our first saw is our little walk behind uh, dust controlled um, piece of equipment. Now you can see it's real versatile. These are actually some pretty precise cuts, but with some practice, you can uh, use this tool for these cuts. Now, obviously, a word of caution, anytime you're using a tool, a high uh, RPM tool, you want to protect your eyes with the proper safety uh, equipment, like uh, safety glasses as a minimum. This is a great tool for cutting perfect circles every time. You can see Brad standing on top of the uh, pivot point. Uh, we've established what our, our um, radius point is here. This has a pivot. I'll go ahead and uh, turn it to the on position, push down, and we have the vacuum attached, and we'll cut a perfect circle every time. I'll show you how it works. Okay, turn that on. We've uh, cut our inner circle successfully, so now I want to cut the outer circle. So all I'm going to have to do is, while Brad is still uh, standing on the pivot point, is just simply slide it out to where I want the radius here. And once I've established that, I'll go ahead and tighten them back up, and we'll do it one more time. This is probably my favorite tool. It's a four inch grinder with a, uh, a four inch diamond blade on it, continuous rim. This is really versatile. You can now use it for terminating cuts. On these cuts, we use the walk behind saw and we don't ever want to get an overcut. So we always try to stop an inch back and we'll come and we'll terminate these cuts right to the outer portion of this circle. So it's a real versatile tool. Also, once you gain your confidence with this saw, believe it or not, you can cut circles. Even this tight, tight, uh, Oh, probably 18 inch diameter circle. So I'll show you how it works. A couple things, um, protect your eyes and uh, you know, always control the dust. Brad's gonna chase me with the vacuum um, and we'll show you how it works. Well, there you have it. In about an hour's time, we uh, chalked down a real simple design. We've demonstrated how some of the diamond tooling in the saws work, and uh, we've got a nice medallion ready for the next step, which would be to wash it off, clean all of our footprints and the orange chalk off, and start with our coloring process, which could either be acid stains, water-based stains, or even dyes for that matter. So we're getting ready to apply uh, acid stain on our micro top floor. A couple of observations. Um, number one, We've pre-moistened our micro-topping. We don't want it, the stains to take too aggressively. And by pre-dampening or pre-wetting the micro-topping, it slows the uh, absorption of the acid stain. Another factor, we've diluted the stains down. Now, this was only poured yesterday, so it's still curing out. And so we're about four parts water to one part acid stain. We're getting ready to apply a water-based dye. A couple of observations. This is a micro top panel that we had previously installed. We did a base color of an acid stain, cleaned and neutralized the acid stain, made sure there was no remaining residue, and now we're getting ready to apply a water-based dye right over the top of the previously acid stain panel. It's very important uh, when you clean these panels, obviously you're using a lot of water, and the water gets down into the saw joints, and sometimes if you see it drying darker like right here, for example, if you don't dry that out first with either a heat gun or a blow dryer or perhaps a leaf blower, uh, the stains will actually dry much darker because there's a lot more moisture right there. Sometimes it's a nice effect, but you need to be made aware that make sure all of your joints are in fact dry prior to the staining process. Now, we're going to preserve some of the natural color of the acid stain. I love the color that we see here over the top of this micro topping, so we don't want to cancel that color. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through and uh, label the areas we don't want stained. 